Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our live streamed event for November. My name's Karen Williams, and I'm so excited to welcome you. We're here back at our office today after three months of being away. What was going to be a seven day short term uh, working from home became quite a longer period in Melbourne, didn't it? So here we are back at our beautiful offices, and Nat's here as well. Hi, Nat. Good morning. And James is here behind the camera. Hey. So we're very excited to be back. I'm a little bit nervous and a little bit excited. I think that's a great combination. So welcome to you on this beautiful Friday morning. And you know, in November, it's like now we're looking, starting to look forward into 2022, aren't we? Starting to think about how do we want to show up? Who do we want to be? And so today's conversation around managing that change, navigating through that change that's constant, isn't it? Now that we're re-emerging back into life, what does that look like? What do we want to take with us that really worked for us from working from home? And how do we want to adapt and lead people and coach and support people around us so that we bring this great conversation about who we can be, empowering others through this new place that we're moving into. It's kind of a combination of what we've had and what we will be. So I'm excited about this conversation today. It's been inspired by a number of different things that I'll share with you soon. So how does this go? If you're here for the first time, we have an hour together that usually goes pretty quickly. And I'll share with, with you some things on the whiteboard. I'll talk to you a little bit about some models and frameworks that you can use and implement in your life immediately. So if you're here for the first time, welcome. Thank you for jumping in and trusting me, trusting yourself and spending this time with me. I really value and appreciate your investment. And if you're here and you've been here before or maybe you've been to most events over this last couple of years that we've been doing them now, then I welcome you and honour you and acknowledge you for being brave, for continuing to do the work of personal growth and self-development so that you can be the leader and the professional and also the mum, the sister, the wife, the daughter, whoever you want to be in the world. It takes conscious choice to navigate these challenges that we face every day in ways that we don't get triggered in ways that we can show up and make our choices that feel aligned to our truth. And that takes work, it takes effort, it doesn't just happen. If we let ourselves live our lives by default, often we find we just keep repeating the same things. Some of those things are really positive and um, have us get the results that we want, but other things can be help it, uh, have us stay stuck in situations or circumstances that just feel like Groundhog Day. And it might be a relationship situation, it might be our work situation or relationship at work where we just feel like we just keep repeating the same thing, not knowing how to change it. Well, I was thinking about this morning, I was thinking about, you know, there's a, um, a report done by Deloitte that I've shared with some of you um, called Women at Work. And it's a report done this year based on the impact on women of the pandemic in our, in our work lives, done across 10 countries, across 10 business sectors with 5,000 women. And one of those, um, one of the reports um, comes back as, you know, how much women don't feel supported in their working environment and how much they haven't been supported to balance work and life and all of these different um, responsibilities that women have had, and I'm sure men have had too. Um, this distinction, this report talks about women at work and all of these extra things that have piled on top of us and then how that's impacted us, both at work and in our personal lives. And while I was reading that report, I'm in two minds of, yes, absolutely true. And then who are we going to be about that? For a long time in my life, and I didn't know it at the time, but looking back, I can see I was victim to my life. I was victim to life, reacting to what was coming at me, working really hard, trying to be a really good person to everyone around me. Yet what was happening was I was just getting more and more exhausted and my results weren't improving. They were good. Uh, from the outside in, they looked like everything was working really well, but I was struggling and I didn't know that I was waiting for things to change around me, for things to feel better for me on the inside and in my life. And so when I started to look at that place in my life and you know, in my mind, then I started to produce different results with less stress and much more feeling of connection and alignment with myself. So that's what these conversations are about. So I'm really thrilled that you're here and thank you for jumping in and um, sharing this time with me and with us. So in your um, chat box, if you'd like to write um, or change it to panellists or all panellists and all attendees or everyone, something like that so, so that everyone can see your sharing. What happens in these breakfast events if you haven't been here before is everybody likes to comment and share or ask questions 
And it can be really helpful for everyone to see that because I might not see every question and Nat might not see every question, but you might be inspired by what someone else says. <clears throat> so I think that's really fun. And it builds also this sense of connection. A lot of people have shared with me through these events, even though they're online and we're not in a room together, it feels like community and I really love that. So I want to keep expanding that conversation so that you feel supported and when you leave this session today, you've got some inspiration, you've got some new tools to work with and you feel like you've got something fresh to go forward into your weekend and your next week. So welcome to everybody. I'd love to know who's here today. So let me make sure I've got my chat box on and I'd like to know who's here and where you're from. So, hey Jazz, nice to see you. Yes, I know Vicky, we're back in the office. It's like, I don't know if I'm gonna remember everything that I need to do, but you know, if something happens and I walk out for any reason, I'll be back. <laughs> but um, I, think I've, I think we've got it sorted. So, who's here and where are you from? I would love to know. So pop it in the chat box and uh, would help me understand um, who we've got on the call and what might be of value for you today. So if you do that, that would be amazing. So my vision is this expanding and ever-growing community of women around the world having this ripple effect because they're showing up doing the work themselves, the brave work of personal growth and awareness and choosing who they want to be and then having this beautiful ripple effect in their families, in their communities and their organisations such that people around them are empowered in that space. Because our job is not to fix people's problems or to do things for people. And we certainly don't get the best results when we fire off instructions and tell people what to do. We get the best uh, results and outcomes and people experience the best in themselves when we can create and hold these spaces for people that they feel safe and can lean into and you know, reflect for themselves on where they might be stopped or what's getting in their way. And that requires a belief that we all have everything we need within us. And if we adopt that belief, then we become extremely powerful and influential in our ability to hold that space for people to find their own answers. So to me, that's an exciting conversation and we're growing that community every day. We have beautiful inner circle programs now where women are coming together and having these conversations together. And it's, they're exquisite and very juicy and raw and brave. And I'm really thrilled that we get to have those conversations. So as we work with more and more women in leadership, then that ripple effect will grow. We work with men as well in leadership. I coach a lot of men and obviously they have their own challenges and I'm very privileged to support them through their leadership as well. And my team and I work with organisations at all different levels with leadership teams, helping them build great teams with trust and holding people accountable in ways that people feel really inspired and empowered to be all that they can be. So if you'd like to know more about that, then you can get in contact with us after today's session. So that's about all I want to share with you about um, who we are and what we do. This is your space today to reflect, refresh and reset. Surely knows we need those reset moments. Recently we completed a program with an organisation. We went through three months of just these beautiful conversations, small groups, where they had this opportunity to just stop and pause and breathe, to connect with each other and hear from each other what was happening. And they all really appreciated that opportunity because at work we don't often get that chance, do we? So I really love these chances for you to stop and pause. All right, so who do we have here today? So I've got a quiet chat box today at the moment. Oh no, Karen, you just need to scroll. <laughs> so we have um, Sarah. Hi Sarah, happy Friday, lovely to see you. And Liesl, welcome. I hope you're feeling better and um, really uh, excited to be connecting with you again soon. And we have Maria, very nice to see you Maria, welcome. And nice to see you, thank you for being here. St Kilda Beach, Helen, very nice, beautiful day in Melbourne today. So I'm going to move into our topic today. And so our topic today, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> um, it's amazing what happens with glasses, you can see. So the topic today is don't lose the real you how to speak and lead brave through change. I was inspired by a few different things. It was inspired for me by a conversation I was having with one of my team. We're talking about how do we now transition into the world, back into life, back into you know, social life and you know, Christmas shopping and all the things that we'll be doing over this next few months. And some people will feel really excited and inspired by that. Some people will feel maybe a bit tentative 
and, and whether that's being around people, or whether that's around health, or just getting used to what we do again and becoming more familiar and adapting, having our brain adapt. So that started with that conversation and what might that look like? So how do we keep what's important to us and keep speaking our voice or even find our voice for the first time as we come back into this new working environment, whether that's hybrid or back into the office for you or still working from home. And then there was the Deloitte report that I uh, read, inspired by um, Melissa Hamilton, who does the Brave Feminine Leadership uh, podcast, which I recommend. And she shared on her LinkedIn page the Deloitte report. So I looked at that and read that, and I was really inspired by um, the extent of that report and the people, the women who they'd surveyed and the results from that report. So we'll send that out to you because I think that's uh, really uh, worth reading and you might find that you resonate with that and the impact of the pandemic on women at work. And then it was also inspired by the beautiful conversations we're having with women coming together, whether it's at these events or out in a circle. And the women that I coach one-on-one -on -one and in groups and organisations every day if you could tune into those conversations, you know, and sometimes I, I wish I was recording those beautiful conversations because there's so much gold in them. And so by that as well. And then this conversation that I was having with a HR director that I shared with you yesterday in my email to you, uh, and some of you may have read it, some of you may not, who said to me, and we had been talking for a little while, maybe a few weeks, a couple of months, about um, doing some work with their female leaders. And at the, this time, the response came back to me was, there's no appetite in our organisation for a, a program for women, for female leaders. And I was, I was really taken aback. I was quite shocked and surprised. And certainly, I know timing is important, and we don't always have the budget to do the programs we want to do in organisations. But I thought the choice of words around no appetite for this conversation was quite... Um, you know, really illustrated and shone the spotlight on the thinking uh, potentially in that organisation and maybe the fear or the lack of know-how of that HR director to challenge that conversation in the organisation. And so, you know, it kind of got me thinking about what are we doing as a stand for ourselves and the conversations we want to have. If you look at Brené Brown's work and Simon Sinek's work, um, and there's a lot of women, if you look at um, Melissa Hamilton's podcast, a lot of women, um, Glenn Doyle having this conversation about brave, le brave leadership. And I call it embodied or integrated leadership. When we can bring both um, all our whole selves to work, and, but also the, the part of us that really wants to drive and achieve results, and the part of us that wants to build community as well. And if we can bring all of that to work, then what's the conversation that we can have managing up with our peers and also as we lead our teams. So to me, that's what was all inspiring for this conversation today. So there's three things. So I'm using the uh, whiteboard again today. So I'll be interested in your feedback about what you like, whether you like the, the iPad that I used last month um, and shared that on the screen, or whether you like the, you know, the manual whiteboard, the old school, because I like both. But I'd be very interested to know what you enjoy and what um, is helpful for you. So today, So if you're here for the first time, we always think about and reflect, then we take some action as in what are we actually going to do and commit to some action, and then we leave with new insights, new awareness, maybe new inspiration. That's my intention. So today, I want you to think about what's the change that you want that you're waiting for? Right? So the change you want that you're waiting for. What are you hoping changes in your organisation or even in your family or community or friendship groups around you that you speak about or you think about but you're waiting for, that you might not be doing anything about, that you wish would change? And there might be valid reasons that you haven't done anything or not doing anything about it now. It might be you've tried lots of different things and nothing's worked. It might be you're exhausted of trying or it might be you're just trying to get through the daily grind and lead your team without pushing up against maybe the status quo or the thinking around you. So, and that's all valid, but I invite you to reflect on that today. And then what would you need, what would you need? So the, the doing is I want you to come up with what you need to navigate that change if you stood for it. Especially given the fact that we're emerging now back into you know, an integrated life 
We've had the experience we've had over the last couple of years. And now we know we're never going back to what we had before. And we're evolving forward always. So what do you need? That's what I want you to do today. I want you to come up with your thoughts on what you're going to do and the action you're going to take so that you can start to stand for that change. Yep. And then I want you to leave with new inspiration but feeling more connected and aligned with who you are and what's really important to you as a leader. Now, whether you're a formal leader responsible for people and people report directly to you, or whether you're someone who has influence and wants to have great influence, doesn't matter. Leadership is everybody's job, yeah? And so I want you to leave feeling more connected and aligned with what's really true for you, okay? So those are our three things. All right, so very good. Alex from Geelong, welcome, nice to see you. So any questions so far about that? Otherwise, I'm going to jump in. And please feel free, as I said, to pop your comments and chat, um, questions in the chat box. And we might open for coaching today as well. We haven't done that for a couple of months. So I'd be really excited to do that. So I want to just get a time check, Nat, for myself, please. I 7.48. 7.48, perfect, thank you. So there's been a lot of talk on LinkedIn recently about Sarah Blakely, hasn't there? And the deal that she's done with Spanx, a $1.2 billion deal, quite extraordinary. And um, I've listened to a number of different things from her, short interviews from her over the time. But I invested over an hour in an interview that uh, Tony Robbins did with her actually a year ago, about a year ago. And this, I've shared this interview with several women uh, that we're working with. And the feedback back to us has been that it's so ins been so inspiring because of the depth that which Sarah speaks to in her leadership style and the challenges that she faced and who she chose to be. And that's one of the things that's really inspired this conversation today for me as well. And she spoke to how she was um, told or warned that business is war. And for her, that didn't sit right, it didn't resonate. And it's a distinction I wanna look at today, where are we at war with ourselves maybe our environment, and maybe the change that we're trying to make. Because if we're not at war, then where do we want to be? And if we're at war unconsciously, then let's have a look at that and let's start to shift that. And so she said, I don't want to go to war. And she made a conscious choice that she shared recently in the celebration that they were having around um, this deal internally in her, with her staff. And she shared how she chose consciously kindness compassion, intuition and empathy. And that's how she wanted to lead. And she said, I'm gonna choose this, I'm gonna see what happens. Rather than I'm gonna strive and survive and then do a bit of that later once we've got the results, which I've been uh, guilty of doing sometimes in my head. Just gotta to get to the next thing, yeah? And what she did was consciously choose who she wanted to be. She brought humor to her work. And also I love the distinction around embarrassment. The willingness to be really real and authentic and be embarrassed at maybe mistakes that she made or things that she did, but allowing that to be a gift for others. Now, that's speaking my language because I am so imperfect that it's not funny. And I mix my words and I say the wrong things and I get jumbled when my mind's racing and my hands aren't working as fast as my brain. But you know, if we can be our real selves and that's going to connect with the people that are ready for it. And then it's just gonna leave beside us the people that aren't ready or don't resonate and that's okay. So I invite you to be inspired by Sarah Blakely's story and the things that she's been sharing about her leadership style. So my question that's come from that story is, so if we're not going to war, then what are we doing? Yep. And so that's the first piece that I want to talk to you about is, where are you going to war? Yeah. So, I want you to consider and try this on like a jacket, as you know. Some of it may resonate and some of it may not, and that's okay. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts on this. So the, the point here is where are we at war and not actually realising it, not awake to it. That's what I want you to become more awake to it, to it today. So where are we at war with ourselves? Right? And when I was thinking about this, um, when I was sort of, um, exploring this distinction of where we are at war that was inspired by my um, listening of Sarah's um, sharing. I felt like with, with ourselves, we're at war in um, self-criticism, 
in comparison, in judgment, in expectations. Yeah, we're at war with ourselves when we're having this internal dialogue with ourselves. That we're um, like this tug of war inside of us, right? Where we want to have, find peace, but then we keep expecting more from ourselves, and we're never doing enough. You know, I work with a lot of mums who feel like they're never really enough at home, never really enough at work, because they're always in two minds trying to take care of everybody. And maybe that's partly of, of part of what your challenge is as well. And it has us always be kind of less than present, doesn't it, with what who we are and what we want and who we need to be for ourselves. Um, we're at war with, you know, who's the authentic me and who's, you know, the one wearing the mask and how often am I wearing that mask? Now as we integrate back into life in some form, you know, is there a mask that I now put on with the friends around me? Maybe there's people around you that no longer connect or work for you as far as where you're going in your journey but there's a mask that you put on because there's not the conversation that you need to have you're not having. And then we know that we don't do what supports us, right? So we don't do what nourishes us. And when we're at war with ourselves, we keep making promises to ourselves, but we're not actually putting it into practice. So I'd love to hear from you as we look into this first step. Where are you at war with yourself? And maybe you hadn't thought of it like that before but now you're starting to see it's having a toll on you or there's this tug of war inside of you. So I'm keen to hear your comments on that. Wow, two weeks of quarantine, Vicky. Challenging, well done, you, yes. And you've been here and gone and we never got to see each other. <laughs> Crazy. Yes, so where are you at war with yourself? I'm gonna give you a moment to do that. Wow, bad writing, James. I would also put up here over analysis. Yeah. And some and also I would put here heart versus head. Yeah, when our, when our intuition says one thing or um, and our inner knowing says one thing, but we override it. So we've got this beautiful inspirational impulse to go for something, but we logically talk ourselves out of it. I would say that that's where we're at war with ourselves. So Helen says, pressure to perform in new job while all remote working. Yeah, putting that pressure on ourselves to be who we think we should be being. Yeah rather than maybe owning our imperfections and communicating those and letting people know, managing expectations potentially. Very good, Helen. Yeah, having compassion for self in the new stuff. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so Vicky shares, and hopefully everyone can see that, or maybe not, Vicky shares, we started off strong, this is in quarantine, with the first week of self-support and meditation, and this week has been a battle to get basic things done. It's been a battle, yeah, especially in this military environment with no, so many rigid, inhumane. Yeah, feel for you. I'm so pleased that you're here, Vicky. La and Lisa says, layering too many expectations are ultimately creating a battle of winning or losing. Yeah, so expectation on expectation, and that could be in different areas of our lives. And so as we expand, it's interesting, isn't it? As we, our life expands into more, uh, because we have a greater capacity to hold more for ourselves, whether that's more success, in whether that's relationship, financial success, business success, leadership, bigger team, whatever that, the health. As we grow this capacity to hold a stronger space for ourselves, then we start to um, analyse the expectations of ourselves to perform in those areas or to live up to what we think we should be in those areas, yes? So it's this double-edged sword. As we grow, then there's more, we put more on us. Maria says, feeling responsibility for my people when I really don't have the control how the organisation chooses to operate, yes. 
when it feels like outside of our control, then who are we for, as a stand for that while we're trying to support our people? Beautiful sharing. Thank you, everyone. So remember, everyone, to share to panellists and everyone so everyone can see your sharing. So the next piece is where are we at war with others? I'll use the blue again. Where are we at war with others? And I find this to be, when I was reflecting on this for myself, where are we expecting things of others but not communicating it? So we're now almost projecting our expectations. Where are we blaming? Now this is going to take some courage to look into, isn't it? Because now we're turning it on ourselves and a mirror on well, how are we being and how we're showing up for others. So where are we blaming? Where are we taking on the obligation that others have of us? Yeah. So we, it's almost like we sense it as, as intuitive beings. We sense this obligation, whether it's to our team or to people around us in our family. And then we just live into that obligation without having the conversation. Is this what you're expecting of me? Because this is what I'm feeling. Is that accurate? Sometimes we get these passive aggressive signs, don't we? And then we decide who we need to be to fix it or to be or make that person happy. So where are we at war in that way? Where are we defending ourselves? And that might be at work where you, when you might be challenged. In the Deloitte report, um, there's a, um, a piece on women not feeling like there's space to speak their voice in meetings or whether they do, then how they feel shut down and judged, judged for their opinion. Now, here's the thing, we all feel judged for our opinion, whether we're women or men, yes? And so then how do we now create this space for our voice? That's the question that I would like to, you to start to think about today. Where are we in fight, flight or freeze? So where are we in protection? Yep. Holding ourselves tense as we walk out the door now back into the office space maybe, or as we open the next Teams meeting or Zoom meeting, where are we holding ourselves tense just to survive it? Or where are we avoiding because we don't feel confident to lean in again? So where are you in that state of fight, flight or freeze? And the other one that I had here was around obligation, which is the same as fitting in, yeah, people pleasing. I would call that we're at war with others. I know that might sound almost like uh, contradictory, but when we're trying to people please, we're not living in alignment with ourselves. And we're trying to make their life better when it's not our role to do that. And so we're giving all this energy to someone to try and fit in with them or accommodate them and overcompensate. That's being at war with others. Thank you, Nat. All right, so where are you at war with others? Got it, Maria. Thank you for sharing. So want to... There's a lot of emotion coming up at the moment. So I hear you. I feel you. Yep. And I want you to know that your emotion is welcome. If there's a lot coming up for you this morning, this is a safe place for you to let it go. And we're through a lens, but I, I'm right here. And we're all right here holding space for each other, yep. These are important conversations. I was working with a, um, a man yesterday, um, powerful, powerful conversation. And he just burst into tears. He's a business owner, amazing leader. And it was a privilege for him, for me, to hold space for him as he navigated his way through that challenge in that time about how he was treating himself in his head. There's a lot being triggered at the moment. So we're right here, yeah? So let me, Nat, is there anything you want to read out in case I've missed something that needs to be shared? I'm just gonna take a moment to read your comments. So Alice, Alessandra says, being patient that I will be able to make changes just more slowly than I expected. Very good. Yep. 
rejecting behaviours and activities that are expected of people like myself. Lots of tears, yeah. Becoming excluded. So Alessandra is sharing, and I'm not sure if everyone can see this, becoming excluded from certain circles, possibly because my actions give away my perspective of certain behaviours. So that can be that we're judging out high, high expectations, and then what happens is those high expectations in stress turn into judgement of ourselves and also judgement of others, and then we can project that. And if we're not aware of that, it can cause disconnection and breaks trust with people. Yep. Yeah. So when we're seeing, when we're talking about this distinction war, I know it's a really strong word, but it has us see things in new ways about who we're being and what we really need to support and nourish ourselves as we move into what life looks like you know, in this new normal. So Sarah says at war with so many things, yeah, identify with everything on this list, yeah. And I think it's a really helpful uh, metaphor or an analogy, being, you know, where are we at war with ourselves? Because I don't want to be at war, yeah, with myself. I don't want to be at war with others. But if we can breathe and nourish ourselves and hold space, we can find those places where our ego our identity wants to go to war because it's been used to fighting and protecting ourselves and where we actually can come back to a space of peace and bring that because peace is really influential, right? And then the last piece here is where are we at war with the culture in our, in our environment? Where are we at war with the culture around us? Where are we trying to fix a broken system but we're not, we, for example, with the HR director that I was speaking to, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't fully present in that conversation because when that person said that, I, I was really surprised by the comment. And we had a polite conversation and we finished the conversation. And then over the next few days, I thought about what, all the things I could have said. <laughs> have you ever had that experience where you've had a conversation and then you don't, you, you, like, oh. Yeah, should I ring them back and say this amazing thing that I just said? Or should I just let it go, right? And what I know for sure in that conversation, that person wasn't open to me in how I was being at that time. And it was just responding to that person. You know, I wasn't fighting for what we should have. You know, I wasn't trying to convince him of anything. I was just respected his choice and his communication with me and said that we would wrap back around in, at another time and would stay connected. But so... I could have tried to fix a broken system by being incessant, by trying to convince, sending him more things. But right now, that person isn't ready for that conversation and that's okay. And now I get to choose where I lean in and lean out, right? So rather than going to war with that person or that organisation, it's like, okay, allow people to be where they are, allow the system to be where they are, and then who am I going to be? Am I choosing to be here, even though I know the system is this way or the culture is this way? Then if I am, that's my responsibility. Even though there's all these justifications, well, I've got bills to pay and I've got responsibilities and so I can't leave my job. If you stay in that place, that's a victim state, yep. So what I want you to do is wake up to where you might be at war with a culture, trying to fix a broken system, and then maybe reflect on what are the different kinds of conversations I can have. And can I take responsibility for choosing to be here every day? Yep. That's where I want you to think. Karen, a couple of comments have come through. Yeah. One from Anna saying, being a female leader and struggling to cope with a new senior exec judging me based on age and sex, am at war with myself. Yes. And who was that? Anna. Anna. So being, feeling, let me see if I can find that comment. Here it is. No, read it out to me again. Being a female leader and yep. struggling to cope with a new senior exec judging me based on age and sex and yeah. at war with myself. Yeah, so what I'm really interested in is what do those judgments look and sound like, Anna? So you're feeling judged, which is valid. So what is coming at you that has you feel that way? That would be something that I'd be interested in. I'd love you to share that. I want to finish this model. So there's lots of comments coming through, so thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Leanne. It's like I'm in your head. I often get that a lot. Um, so emotional right now, yes. I feel like I'm at crossroads with my career, but I know I'm in charge of my destiny. So true. 
And I think, you know, through this time, many women feel at crossroads in their career. This feels like this state of agitation, doesn't it? Where we know there's something more that we can create. But we've been holding ourselves back for so long. And now we're, we're starting to understand that we don't want to do that anymore. But the question is, well, how now? How, what is that journey of me moving toward someone who can be that person who stands for change, who leads change? And that is a development journey, right? That requires skill and awareness and understanding and practice. And that's why we do the work that we do together, yes? And it starts in these breakfast sessions and it moves through into other programs and work together if that's what's, you know, resonance and works for you. But we can't expect ourselves, and here's where we need to practice self-compassion, to go from holding ourselves back maybe for a long time. In some way, every woman I meet has some level of self-doubt, no matter how successful she is in her career and her life. So in some way, we're all holding ourselves back. We can't expect ourselves to go from a practice and a pattern of that to fully now standing in full view for the stand that we want to make. We've got to practice and grow and build our capacity in that. It doesn't have to take a long time, but it requires conscious choice and effort and practice, yes? So have some self-compassion as we do that and know that as we come up against those new limits in ourselves, there's always going to be a new limit. We don't get rid of a limit and go, great, now I'm free for life. No, there's always going to be the next struggle or the next um, challenge for us about who we're being in our head for ourselves, right? Okay. So Alessandra says, with the culture of fear to share, even if it's to achieve a better outcome, it feels highly inefficient and not ideal. Yeah, it can feel very awkward in our environments and our organisations, can't it? When we know we're attempting to stand for change, but what's coming back at us is, you know, makes us fearful. So um, Anna, has Anna shared anything more at this point? No. No, okay. So Anna, I'd love to hear what's coming at you that's having you feel judged. I'm really interested in that. And so the last piece here, and so as emotion come up, comes up for you, grab the tissues, let it out, allow this space to just process, yeah? Allow this to be your place where you move through things. And the last piece here is um, where we're at war is results versus our well-being. So where are we? And we've done conversations and webinars on, on our well-being before. Where are you at war trying to get the result but not listening to what you need to nourish? Where are you not restoring? Where are you not resetting? So where are you at war in that results versus well-being? Yep. And then can you take responsibility for your creating that? Yes, there might be lots of demands on your time and lots of things happening that are expecting you, but there's conversations that you're not having here. All right, you all with me? All right, so time check, please. 8.09. Amazing, thank you. So let's talk about so thank you so much everyone for sharing how big that conversation is and has been for you. you know, wherever you're at, I want you to know right now in this moment is perfect, might not feel perfect, might feel messy, I get it, but we're here, we're together and we're looking at this you know, right down the line, aren't we? So now I want to know what's the impact. Can I go here, James? Yeah, or is that yeah, too far? Try and keep it as well as so just here? So what's the impact, and I'm, this is going to come quick and easy, I think, for all of you, what's the impact of being at war with yourselves, with ourselves, with each other, with others, with our culture, and inside ourselves the results? You know, I would say we're exhausted. There's confusion. We can almost feel like we want to give up. You know, how am I going to do this? You know? um, we can be, it can be a slow burn because we don't realise we've had this pull and push and pull inside of us all the time, yep. And there's a state of disconnection. What else has been the impact for you? So what else would you say is the impact of being at war? I'm keen to hear that. And then I'm going to give you something that's going to help. We did miss one comment from Anne who says, war with myself is self-criticism yeah. and then this leads with blaming and avoidance of others so that I do not have to face these issues. Yes, we all do that, don't we? 
Absolutely. That person or those people that we just don't feel that we can be with because it's so challenging for us, we avoid them. And I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm saying is notice that about yourself, understand why that is, do some self-reflection, get to the core of why that is, what's that triggering in you? And then see if you can start to evolve from there so that you're building your self-trust and your authentic confidence so that you can, you can be around those people if you choose or if you need to be and not feel like you need to shut down or be in protection or fight, flight or freeze. Because you're not at your best self when you're here or at any of this state, yeah? So I'm not saying to push into, because that would be then, if we're going from avoidance now to showing up and challenging those people, that might be a push or at war energy. So that's not necessarily the answer right now. Self-reflection would be the answer, what's being triggered within you. What else? Being distracted and grumpy. <laughs> Very good, Alessandra. Yes, grumpy, for sure. And often we take it out on those around us that are closest to us, maybe on our kids or our partners. Yep. And they're like, whoa, right? that doesn't belong here. Or that, where did that come from? So being aware of that is really important too. All right, any other, any other draining? Yes. It's, it's so blocking. Frustration, resentment? Yes. All of those impacts. Uh, and we don't even realise it. And then we're just like churning through our days, aren't we? So here's what I want you to do. Just take a moment to reflect on where does it feel like you're most at war? Is it yourself? Is it others? Like where could be the first place you start to reflect and do some change, some growth? Just take a moment to do that. I'm going to have a sip of water. Live conversation. Yeah. Let's do that, shall we? So hopefully you've identified now one of those areas where you'd like to go to work, not war, on yourself. Yeah, and you might need some support in that. And if you do, then reach out. Yeah, there's lots of different things that um, are available to you, whether that's with me or someone else. Um, we have a YouTube channel, you can get some free support there. Um, you know, on our socials, we're putting up, you know, posts that hopefully inspire, connect with people. Um, we can have a conversation. So know that you're not alone. Yeah, that's what's most important. Because what, what we don't want to do, the predictable future is, after today, you'll shut all of that back down, right? And then just keep going and keep doing the same thing. There's always a predictable future. And if we can check in on ourselves and ask ourselves, what is that? If I keep doing what I've always done, I'm going to keep gaining the same results. What is that predictable future? Because as human beings, we can tolerate a lot of pain before we make change. Yeah, because change is hard and scary. So we'll talk ourselves out of it a lot of the time. And which is why having a network and a community around us is really important to help us um, reach into that change. Yeah, because we see other people around us doing it and being brave. When we're in our lives looking around and we don't see that potentially, then we can justify why we stay at war with ourselves and accept it. Yeah, but feeling a lot less than satisfied and or fulfilled and very disconnected and all of those things that you just talked about, the impact, right? So, um, I've got, I've, I want to give you a model, but is there someone who would like, if someone would like to have a quick conversation about what they're feeling today, 
um, and I can do some quick coaching with you, then let's have a chat and we can open the mic and we'll have a conversation. It'll be brief coaching um, and I'll be pretty direct with you as um, I usually am in my coaching, but it can be, it can be transformational if you'd like to lean into that. So if you'd like to, you can pop your hand up and um, Nat will let me know that you're wanting to have a conversation. So if you feel inspired to, but you're scared, that's the perfect place, lean in, pop your hand up, yep. All right, so I'm gonna rub this off now. Great work, everyone, so far. This work is for the brave, yes? And the brave hearts, as we call ourselves, or as I call us. <laughs> and it's not, it's not for everyone because it is tough. And what I find is that the work, the people that come to us and do our work, the work that we do, and the people who have tried things in, in the past and not, nothing's worked. You know, we've tried all the memes and the reading the great books and going to the one day workshops and the seminars, and then things you know still kept repeating themselves it's like oh, I really need to do the work now yeah so this is who you are all right so do we have any hands up any brave people yet okay if you're holding back waiting what I find often with groups of women in leadership as well or female leaders that we work with some can be very polite no need to be polite here right don't wait for someone else and give someone else permission if you're ready and you're inspired and you've got something, jump in. All right, so, so uh, I don't know if you saw Selma Hayek. She was um, the lead in uh, the new Marvel movie, Eternals. And I loved her interview on the project um, about and what she shared about how the director, Chloe, was looking for someone who was uh, a leader who was strong but also warm. And she chose Selma because of um, that strength within her. And so it was interesting, Selma sharing how she wasn't asked in her 20s or 30s or even her 40s to be a Marvel character, but she was asked at 55 to be the lead. And, you know, and she calls, as she said, she, you know, I'm Latin, um, Latino, and I'm also Arab, and you know, I'm 55, and I'm a superhero, right? And the part actually in the comic is that was actually a male. So, but the director, of her wanting to show a woman who's strong and warm, I thought was a brilliant conversation um, for this time that we're in and um, supporting female leaders. And it was one of the things that inspired this conversation today as well. And so for me, it's about, there is always opportunity for us. And this com the conversation in organisations around culture now is, is moving forward into a new kind of leadership, strong and warm and brave leadership. Um, and I'm inviting you to start to lead that conversation in your teams and in your organisations. So if we're not going to war, then what are we doing? And in my words, we're building community. Yeah. We're not at war. We're building strong, powerful, inspired, connected communities of trust that create amazing results together. Yep. And that to me is exciting. And so the, what I want to show you here, firstly I want to ask you is about your definition of strength. And one of the things I was thinking about last night is we need to redefine what strong means. Because if we look at, uh, if we look at war, strong might mean something different to when we're building community. So I invite you to write down what, is, what does being strong mean to me? And uh, can we redefine that? Can we move it from push and um, winning and, or losing to you know, connection and living in alignment with our values? Because that takes strength. Can we redefine it to courage? Yep. So that's the first thing that I want you to look at as we start to evolve out of being at war with ourselves and each other. You good? Yeah, and just said resilient. Resilient, yes. Yeah. So, and what does resilient mean for you? Is that about tensing up and being able to survive things? Or is that being open and connected and being able to intuit? Because that's where this conversation, for me, around community, that's how we build community. 
So this um, model, what time is it for me? Everyone's looking at their watch. 8.21. <laughs> so I'm starting to get a bit nervous, right? Um, so there's this model that I want to share with you that was inspired in a coaching conversation with an incredible woman um, that uh, I'm working with, always working with incredible women, right? And as we worked through this piece, we created this model together. And we talked about, well, what does it take to not be at war? It wasn't this language we were using at the time, but in building community. And it takes being present and it takes having intention, right? So clear intention and being present. Because if you're not present, then you're busy. And if, you're not, if you don't have clear intention, then you lack purpose. So these are the two continuums that we're working with, right? So this is like the solution now for how do we not be at war? How do we be something else? So if we're, if we're lacking purpose and we're, and we're busy, then I would call this the spinner. And this, the, the woman that I was coaching at the time, she, she called this just like spinning my wheels, like just keep doing the reactionary thing, right? When I'm busy and I don't have a lack of purpose. And this is a woman who leads huge teams in her organisation. To me, this is where we're repeating things, right? We're just doing the same thing, as I said, the predictable future. If we're present but we lack purpose, this is the wanderer, right? We might be having a lovely time, but in leadership, we're not moving forward. We don't have a direction. And this is unplanned, a state of unplanned and being unprepared. If we're busy and we have a clear intention, but we're, still, we're, but we're busy, I would call this the solver. And she actually called it the imposer, imposing my agenda on my team. So I'm directing, I'm telling, whether all my team might be my family, right? So I'm doing the solving. So I have this clear intention, which is awesome, this vision, but I'm really busy and I'm not connected, I'm not present. And so now I'm in this solving situation. So who are we when we have a clear intention and, and we're present and we're called this the state of, of being the guide? And I love this. I love the state of guide. And this is the journey that we take women on who've done a deep dive with us over six months and now they're moving, might be ready now to move into a state of what we call leading transformation. So they move from doing the work on themselves to now leading transformation. It's a 12 month program that has quarterly sessions. And the state, that journey is moving from leader to guide. Right? That beautiful state of almost being invisible and people know that they're doing it for themselves. And we're walking beside people and creating that beautiful space as we go being dynamic and allowing people to shine and rise in that. So that's the state of where we're having those conversations where we're not going to war, but we're building community, yeah? And I love this, it's about, and this is what this amazing woman was sharing, empowering the hero in others, or the heroine, yeah? The state of guide. So that's where I invite you to be, or start to look at as you move out of this state of being at war, moving into the state of being a guide. Right. How do we do that, Karen? We do the work of self-leadership, always and first. A lot of leaders will ask me, what's the right thing to say? How do I do this with my people? No, that's too far down the track. You've got to come back to self and keep doing the work on yourself. And as you do that, what you start to give to others is what you're already giving to yourself. And this gentleman that I was coaching yesterday said, he realised that he can't give to his kids what he's not giving to himself. Yeah, same goes for your team. So, do we have any people who would like a conversation? No one's put up their hand. No one wants some coaching. I hope, no, I hope people aren't scared. So, all right, so talk to me about your questions about how to be a guide. We've got five minutes left. So I want to answer your questions, specific questions, about how you can be the guide. Because that how is a big conversation, yes? And I want to know what your questions are. My, my first uh, suggestion to you would be redefine strength. Or redefine what being strong means. It means identifying your beliefs. What would I need to believe to be the guide? And if I'm in one of these other states, what are my belief systems here? Yeah? 
because our beliefs drive our behaviour. Yep. So we need to know what we believe if we want to move towards that. So those are two things here. Redefine strength. Identify your beliefs. And then know that you have the power to choose. I'm not buying any stories for excuses or justifications about why you're in the situation that you're in around and why you get stuck and have to stay there. I have compassion for it, but I know you're way more powerful than staying stuck in that conversation for being at war. Anna, Anna. has raised your hand. Anna, go. Anna, we've got a few minutes. I was hoping, Anna. Anna, welcome to the call. Oh, hello. Hi, Karen. Hi, Hi. everyone. Hi, Anna. Welcome. I, I, I was hesitating. I, I did respond to my first comment, but obviously there were a lot of other comments and it got missed, but um, I am a bit emotional. I'm sorry, but... Um, That's okay. Um, sorry. You don't need to apologise. I am a leader um, in my current role. I lead a team and <clears throat> during COVID, I exceeded my responsibilities. I did create, a, a, what you say, Karen, um, a community. Yeah. I led a team of males, which were amazing. Um, and the industry that I work in is at the moment, um, shifting and changing, and I embrace change wholeheartedly. Yeah. Um, this new leader that has joined the company um, over time did change my role without really much um, direction and much notice. Um, it was very fluid, um, and I did not, I just embraced it and I went along because I wanted to be in that journey of change. Um, however, in a meeting that I had with him, he did he did um, comment on my age and my sex. And in the sector that I'm in, I'm so sorry. Your tears are welcome. <laughs> um, I was taken aback. I did not want to say to him. Yeah. <clears throat> because I am... <clears throat> I am very respected at my job, at my work, and I have all my career. Yeah. Um, and I did not choose to be spoken to that way. I did confront him who he denied and he played the victim himself. Yeah. Um, and he basically is, is directing me to, because of my age and my sex, I'm not, I shouldn't work in the area that I'm working at the moment and I should be doing something else until I retire. Basically, so look, I have chosen, um, I had counselling, I have chosen to move away from the role, from, from the company. Yeah. I'm looking for other opportunities, but how I have had issues sleeping yeah. and dealing with, um, yeah, dealing with this pretty much alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and is this is the non sleeping about worry? Is is it is it going yes. over and over in your head? Yeah, I am a single mum. You know the usual story. Um, but I am feeling stronger. Although I'm, I'm sort of emotional, I am stronger. You sound strong. Yeah. I have a few opportunities down on on the on the go, and I. Guess what I need and help with is not. I don't want to lose my self identity, and yeah. Um, and what? That's how so and Anna. Confidence. And, and so what has you concerned that you'll lose your self identity? Because I, this person is shunning me, is making me, is undermining me, he's condescending. And he's shifting responsibility, or he has shifted my responsibility. And basically, yeah, I, I, I said to him, I don't know what you want me to do anymore. I don't know what my purpose is in the business. Yeah. My, I'm a leader and, and my team has basically been taken away from me without really much 
structure change, structural change. Yeah. Um, but what really disappointed me is how he thought he could judge me moving into the business very new, judging me based on my sex and my age and, and making decisions for me, yeah. for my future. Yeah. Um, but I made a decision just, although it's difficult, I've been in the company for many, many years. I feel as though I do need to do this myself. I cannot, I can't, it's, I can no longer be part of that culture. Yeah. Um, so, and the culture that I did create has, has now dispersed, it's gone um, in, in that department, so, totally. So what I hear, Anna, is that part of the emotion maybe around the sadness and the grief around the loss of what you created, because it sounds like you created mm -hmm. something incredible and you yes. said it was around, you know, you built community. So there's a lot of emotion around that as well. Um, that, Definitely. Yeah. And it's what part of our growth, if we're able to, and it takes courage, and it sounds to me like you're a very courageous woman, is to allow ourselves to feel the whole scope and scale of those emotions while also being a stand for who we are and what we accept and don't, which sounds like to me that you are around, you know, challenging and questioning and, and um, saying what's okay, not okay. And probably if I can, given we have only a short period of time today, what I'm wondering might be valuable for you is, it's, it's, like, a, it's, a, it's like a dynamic dance that we do moment by moment. And if, if we can come back to the moment by moment, which, um, is about presence, yeah? yeah? And if we can hold that, it's like two things here. One is uh, you know, stay present with ourselves so we can tune in and when we're triggering and when we're reacting, yes? And, and it's valid yes. for the things that he's saying. Like, I don't think any of us would react and trigger to that, yes? And yeah. it takes a lot to be able to stay present in those places and not feel like we have to protect or defend or want to leave or whatever that looks like in that moment emotionally I mean. So, uh -huh. But you've made your choice about where you're going to be physically as in moving on but while you are in that role then what's important is your well-being, your mental and emotional well-being and, and how you want to move through every day and that only and ever comes back to you, right? And what I mean by that is if you can practice presence with yourself and know that there's two things going on here. One is whatever's going on for him and you can't change that. Doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's okay and you keep setting your boundaries and holding your boundaries and keep saying what's okay and not okay. But at the same time, you, you practice this state of presence so yeah. that you're not closed off to yourself because being disconnected from ourselves is, what's the wor is actually the worst pain. So if we can stay whole in ourselves, and then, and then keep honouring our boundaries, that's where you'll stay in your most healthy, I would say. And then from there, you can take that learning and that growth and that honouring of yourself from a state of presence into your next role. Does that yes. make sense? Yes, it does. It does. Mm. And, and it is, I guess, I just want to, don't want to lose momentum and yeah. moving to the new role. I want to have that confidence. I want to have that strength, that inner strength. Yeah. Um, so I'm constantly going through all the major projects, the milestones, the achievements that I have, that I have um, been able to um, successfully implement um, to give me that inner strength. So yeah. I'm, I'm, that's my what I'm constantly doing, and you know, it's not always it doesn't always work, but I just keep going back to that. Yeah, and the, so and so here's strength. the thing for us as human beings: um, the risk is that we start to believe what, what's coming at us. The risk is we don't dig into our self-trust and instead we, t we calibrate to the feedback, we calibrate to what yes. other people are saying and then we doubt ourselves. So yes. if you can stay present, as I said before, that's going to have you stay in your self-trust and whatever he or that person says, while I'm not saying it's not hurtful and difficult, but you won't, it won't push you around as much when you've got the strong anchor within you of your self-trust. Yeah. yeah? And that's, yeah, that's true. not yeah. easy, absolutely, and I'm, I feel for you and I'm with you. Yeah. And I think you're very courageous and thank you so much for sharing today, Anna. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. If thank I... you, everyone, for your support. I'm sorry for being a bit emotional. And I, I'm not, I, look, I'm 
feel safe being in this space because I know that I do have the support, even that I don't know you all, but Karen, thank you so much. I've been in your webinars throughout COVID and I've really, it gave me a lot of strength that you've got no idea. It, it really did. So thank you so much. I'm so pleased. Thank that you. gives me goosebumps. Thank you, Anna. And thank, thank you, you so much for sharing. I know that your sharing has been a gift to many today. So thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, and if I can support you, um, and you feel like you need to work through some more, then please don't be alone. Reach I'll out. I'll reach out. Yeah. Okay. Right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Anna. Oh, beautiful sharing. Really courageous, and this is the space that we create here together, isn't it? So thank you all for holding space for Anna as she shared, and I know there's some beautiful comments in the chat box as well. Um, yeah, there's strong emotion through this conversation. If something's being triggered in you and you do want and feel like you need support, please reach out to me um, and we can figure out a way that that would work for you. Um, and whether that's a quick conversation just to round off today or whether that's some work you want to do together. Take care. Take care of yourself. Nourish yourself this weekend. It is a journey ahead. It always is. There's always more. And you know, I look forward to our next conversation in December, setting ourselves up for 2022. And um, yeah. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.